right, Shanti Das, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today. As, as my guest today, as we set off Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes. It's a perfect time for us to finally do this. I know Shanti for many years. We haven't talked since you've launched, which is kind of terrible. Yeah, well, it's okay. We, but well, we've connected a little bit, but not really. We to can, sit down and talk about it. Though. Not like this. Yeah. Not yes. Like this, no. And so let, let's just anybody who's new to you. Yes. Let's give everybody a little bit of background and history. How long you've been doing what you're doing, what your organization, how it was formed, all those things. Absolutely. So just first and foremost, I'm a music industry veteran. Yes. I used to be head of marketing for La Face, Arista, Columbia, Universal Motown. She's a G, a OG. She, she, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. We, you we, weren't we, just like some old. Eh, thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I appreciate that. You got credits. You got big credits. <laughs> that means a lot. Yeah. But I went through my own challenges, Angie, um, when I was in the business. And I really, we didn't talk about mental health or anything. I know, it's so crazy how, like, like at all. It was hashtag team no sleep. And then we got <laughs> celebrated the more, you know, we worked and, yeah. and all that good stuff. But anyway, so I walked away as executive vice president at Universal Motown in 2009. Moved back home, started doing a little consulting. And I felt like, like the spirit was moving me to start doing more community service. I couldn't figure it out. And so with my mom having dementia and I went through some health issues that, I eventually found out was a direct result of stress, mm -hmm. which caused me to have cervical spinal stenosis. And I still was like fighting therapy. I don't know why. When I moved back home, I was trying to like get my life together. But even back then in like 2010, nobody was still really talking about it. So anyway, fast forward 2014, my best friend died by suicide. Mm. And I had talked to her the day before. Mm. So like I blamed myself that next year and kind of went on a downward spiral. And then in 2015, I came close to taking my own life, Ange. Mm. Really, really close. And uh, not proud of it, but not ashamed about it. Mm -hmm. So I got the help that I needed. And then I was doing a radio interview in Atlanta, and it kind of rolled off of my tongue. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know why we're so ashamed of talking about it. We just need to silence the shame. And then I was like, wait a minute. Let me put my little marketing hat back on. And, there, then and there it is. It started as a movement. And then we started our own day. I just made up in 2017. I said, I'm going to make May 5th National Silence to Shame Day and see if a few people will post on IG. Girl, we got like 90 million impressions in one day. And a lot of people, you know what's interesting is, and I won't say any names, but some big name executives over the last couple of years have come up to me and said something. I said, you follow me? Mm -hmm. And they went, oh, yeah, I know all about what you're doing. So well, it made me feel good, even though they weren't commenting that uh -huh. they actually saw what I was doing and it was helping them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, you know. I mean, I understand yeah, why. I understand why. The yeah. lifestyle that it takes that it requires to operate at that level for so long, 100%. there's so much of yourself that you don't take care of and, mm -mm. you know, talk about and everybody has to be strong and put on a and face all the, the time. And it's toxic environment. The toxic environment. You don't environment. really know, like, who really talking to you because they love Ange or they like, you know what I'm saying, want to talk to Angie Martinez, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to battle that constantly. So anyway, I knew that we had something after that day. So I started, the, we got the 501c3. We started doing community conversations, small conversations, big conversations, 10 people, 100 people. I started reaching back into the music industry, getting artists to be on panels. And I just created this new niche for myself. And now, like... We're one of the most commonly used hashtags in communities of color. We have our own podcast. We've served over 65,000 people just in terms of getting awareness out. We've won awards from the American Psychiatric Association, NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. I was... Um, how long? How many years has this been It's now? been five years wow. as the organization, mm -hmm. but I've been doing it seven years since I almost started taking my own life. And um, like in the pandemic, Essence named me a mental health essential hero and... I humbly say all of that because it's like we just been quietly doing the work. Yeah. And now I think since the pandemic is all it's in your face. Yeah. No matter if you're a mother, a parent, teacher, a music industry executive oh, or yeah. artist or whatever, we're all going through stuff right mm -hmm. now. So yeah, for sure. Here we are. That's unbelievable. The Thank fact you. that you because, you know, we all get little callings in our life, little yeah. moments. We go through stuff and you think, oh, maybe I should need to make a change. And some people do and some people don't. Some people are scared to make a change. 100%. You know, all of those things. The fact and that you, you know, had enough insight to, like, follow that kind of calling. And it was humbling. And I don't know if you know, but I lost my sister three years ago mm -hmm. unexpectedly. And that really, like, set me back. And she was about to become a therapist because we oh. have another family member. So, you know, that suffers. And so we were both trying to help. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I do this work because of her. But to your point, though, about seeing a calling and not sure if you should take it, like it was scary, mm -hmm. you know, and 
nonprofit is more of a humble lifestyle. You know, I can't right. really go get the red bottles like I used to and everything. Yeah. I still like nice stuff, but I went from being in this, you know, lavish lifestyle to just a life of humility. Mm. But more importantly, we're saving lives. Yeah. Like you really feel it. The too, ROI right? for me for doing this work and changing my life is somebody's mother calling me and saying, my son's in therapy because you saved his life. Him hearing you speak and you being so transparent or my husband's now open to getting help for all of us. Like that's the legacy that I want to leave. Like mm-hmm. I love that I have a legacy of working with Outkast and Usher and Tony Braxton and Prince and all of them. But when you talk legacy, like that dash Mm-hmm. this is it yeah. and I was like okay God I'll, I'll do it but now he's like he's being real fly because I'm trusting him but he's allowing me to be on the Angie Marshall oh stop and, no I'm serious I'm no. on the today was you know I did the breakfast club mm-hmm. and you know it's mental health you know yeah. what I mean it ain't necessarily sexy these are hard conversations but he's allowing me to step back in those circles, circles. and I'm grateful yeah but you also it's like and this I, I credit you with this um it's a it's an easier conversation. It's not it's not foreign to people. It's not weird to people. It's mm-hmm. not foreign to people. I think if ever people have been comfortable to talk about it, it's now. I mean, I'm sure there's still some discomfort for a lot of people, sure. but it's I mean night and day, and you have to feel proud of being part of that. I am, especially our community. That's right? what I, that's what I'm peers. talking about. I'm yeah. talking about our community for yeah. sure. Thank you for that. But you have to feel. I mean, come on. I do. <laughs> I mean, you have to take some credit for that. You've been so, and you were early. It wasn't like you jumped on a bandwagon. Or, yeah. By the way, it's not a bad. Listen, it's not too late for anybody who wants 100%. to do that work. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with getting on yes, this bandwagon whenever, whenever you get on it. But what is the? I don't know. What is the most powerful message you think that is being communicated throughout this to people, like, or that you've learned, or wow, or that I you've mean, seen resonate with people? Yeah, I think. One of the most powerful things, especially for our young people, is knowing that it's okay to talk about it when it's not okay, right? Because I've seen people internalize so much, Mm -hmm. and it can manifest into Mm -hmm. so many other physical illnesses or a severe mental illness. Mm -hmm. It's just that release of knowing, like, now my classmates or my family members or my colleagues are bestowing grace upon me that if I'm not okay, that I can talk about it, mm-hmm. that I don't have to live in shame, mm-hmm. that it's actually being normalized. And you mm-hmm. have somebody like a Naomi Osaka or Simone Biles or, you know, all these artists that are speaking up and talking about it now. Like, it's actually really, like, okay in culture now right? to share, like, it's, and you, it's not okay to like shame people for correct. it, right? Yeah, Which absolutely. It should never have been, but it's really not okay, and it's understood that it's not okay. Correct. Yeah. And you know, even just what we saw happen with Naomi Judd, you know, my, my prayers and thoughts to her family. And here, you're talking about someone who is 76 years old, right? That's what's most fascinating about this whole thing, because you th- and when I heard that, I immediately thought about my aunts, my mom, yeah. because you think people who are older are people who you kind of look who is like our heroes or our our parents or you think you assume they're okay you should never assume they're okay Naomi Judd was very open about her she was especially in the last like five to six years she talked about dealing with depression for many 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 years so maybe her family knew that that was always a you know but let's take it a step further to our community like Shakir Stewart you know Chris Mm -hmm. Lighty Fred Thomas and I don't bring up their names often but I think it's important for us to call their names Mm -hmm. and honor you know their lives um, and be able to still celebrate them and learn from them 100% yeah for sure were you close to any all of Shakir I was Mm -hmm. excuse me I've known Chris and we both had mutual respect for one another but I I wasn't around him as much but Mm -hmm. Shakir and I worked together when he was at Hitco in Atlanta and I was at LaFace Mm -hmm. extremely close that was my boy I actually helped them plan one of his services in Atlanta like that's how close we were wow and I had seen him maybe a couple months before it happened and he didn't really seem like himself but That was even before I was dealing with my own emotions the way, excuse me, that I should have. And so I didn't know the signs to look out for. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I do this work for him as well now. Yeah. And your friend. You said your best friend. I can't imagine. And I I don't know. I don't know if I told you my dad died by suicide. I saw that in So, like, I was seven months old. And my sister and brother, my sister was eight and a half. My brother was five. And they actually, my sister and mom found my dad on the side of the bed of her bed or my brother and sister's bedroom that they shared. And so we, you know, it's been, been heavy through for it. Our, yeah. Yeah. You've been sure. through it. What, what, what do you tell your family? What is your, where's your family at that 
with that now? Like, where do they? Well, my mom just passed in January. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm you... still a girl. Baby. <laughs> oh, up. baby. When I tell you, and I was her main caregiver after my mm-hmm. sister passed. And so. Um, Did she find peace with? What? She did. Before the Alzheimer's started, mm-hmm. she found peace with my dad's death. And I remember she would say to me, like, your dad really loved you. He was sick. He wasn't in this right frame of mind. I understood that as I got to be an adult. But when I was younger, I was really angry. Mm-hmm. I harbored a lot of, you know, hatred, quite honestly, for, with to, towards my father for taking mm-hmm. his own life. But as I got older, I understood that people who sometimes die by suicide, they aren't in their right frame of mind. And it is a sickness like anything else. Mm-hmm. And mom got OK with it. But I saw her suffer for years, oh. cr- crying in silence, you know, depressed and that sort of thing. And. So I guess it was always in the cards for me to be able to turn this around and do this work, and I just had no idea. What do you think is the biggest thing that, or, or, or how you can help? Because, you know, we all have friends or family members or people in our life that we worry about sometimes, sure. or we know they've struggled with depression or they've, you know, they've had bad times and they seem like they're different now. And mm-hmm. you may, you, we may have concern for people, mm-hmm. but what are the signs that you should look out for and then how do you intervene yeah. when you see that, when you see signs of, you know, suicide or... I think some of the signs to look out for are if friends and family are withdrawing mm-hmm. from, like, family social settings and or not really wanting to come out of their room. Like, for me, when I was going through my depression, like, it would be a sunny day, 80 degrees outside, and I would be in my room with the blinds closed, not wanting to go out. Friends would call and invite me places and I would just turn them down. So if you have a child or family member and they're just wanting to stay in their room and not come out, you need to talk about it and see what's going on. Or, you know, if they're feeling hopeless and just saying, like, I'm worthless, you know, I'm useless. Or if they're losing a job and can't hold a job down Mm -hmm. and doesn't seem to be motivated. Right. Mm -hmm. So that lack of motivation. Um, And I think some of the easiest things to do is to say you know when we talk to people and say hey how you doing that's you just expect them to say oh I'm good but say no how are you really feeling Mm -hmm. and I was talking about this earlier to someone I think we need to start talking to our kids a lot younger too and getting them to understand what it means to share your feelings and that it's okay if you're not having a good day and the most important thing is excuse me consistency Because if you see that happen once, but then somebody might snap back into their normal routine, it doesn't necessarily mean they're okay. Because I was dealing with a lot when I was living in New York City, but I was high functioning. Mm -hmm. So you got to really talk to people and talk to them on a consistent basis and really know your children, know your spouse, know your friends and check in with them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It can't be something that you do and then just kind of ignore and say, okay, they must be okay now. Mm -hmm. But you don't know if they've really addressed it because they might have just suppressed those feelings and something else could trigger them where it actually comes out and manifests in a much worse way. Yeah. The interesting thing about some of the trauma and experiences you've been through is you can speak to it from both sides as as a survivor of a parent. Yes. A a friend. And someone so who there's almost guilt attempted. and all that stuff. That, and then also from the inside of also wanting to take your own life. So yeah. and now the grief of losing and then grief. my sister and mom, because not a lot of people equate grief with mental health challenges, mm-hmm. but it can totally bring you down and put you in a terrible place where you're just constantly sitting in your feelings. I tell people, you know, it's important to grieve and grieve in your own way because not, you know, two people don't grieve the same way. But it's also important not to just allow yourself to sit in those feelings. So you got to be able to get up and take walks and exercise and, you know, immerse yourself around friends and family, even when it's tough. I tell people, like, I could be sitting in a red light and something remind me of my mom or my sister and I'll just bust out crying. And I don't care anymore. Whoever sees me and Mm -hmm. I need five or ten minutes and then I can pull myself back together. But I don't try to hide that stuff anymore. We have this new campaign that we just launched called Healing in Public. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all healing in public every day because we don't know what we're going through. Yeah. I don't know what you might be going through. And, you you know, I'm I'm so thankful and grateful that you came out on the other side with your accident. Thank you. But we're all still healing from something. Yeah. And we have to bestow grace upon one another to be able to heal in public. Mm hmm. That's good. And what 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 do you say? As somebody who's experienced that type of not just the grief, but uh, thoughts of suicide. What do you say to somebody who's dealing with that right now, who woke up today and thinks maybe today is going to be the day? Like, what do you say to, to that person? One thing I would say is suicide should not be an option for anyone. 
but I know sometimes it feels like it's an option. And when I was in the thick of it, it wasn't that I wanted to die. I just wanted the pain to go away. Mm -hmm. So I would say, give yourself some grace and don't be afraid to talk to someone and tell them that you're actually thinking about ending your life. Mm -hmm. Because that's the scariest thing, because like we all still have that shame and the stigma still exists because we don't want anybody to think we're quote unquote crazy. And I hate to use that word Mm -hmm. or that something is wrong with us. And, and so many people in this day and age still say like, oh, suicide is such a selfish act or, you know, how could that person be so selfish? Because I said that about my father. Mm. But again, that goes back to giving that person grace. So first we have to give ourselves permission to want to get help. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, again, we'll just sit in it and we're too embarrassed to ask for help. I didn't even share with my brother when I was thinking about taking my own life. And the only reason I told my sister is because someone convinced me to tell her because I was like, I don't want her to think that, you know, something is wrong or that I don't value their, something their is life. Wrong, but baby. Something, I know. Yeah. Exactly. And I know that now. So mm-hmm. if anyone's listening right now, you know, it's okay to open up and share, but you got to talk to somebody because mm-hmm. we cannot heal on our own. And whether you're spiritual or not, if you are spiritual, pray and ask God to give you the strength to actually go talk to a doctor or to share with your friend. Or if you believe in the universe, go outside, immerse yourself in nature, lay down and look up at the clouds and be like, I'm hurting. I need Mm -hmm. help. You know, universe, give me the strength to tell somebody that that's the first step. It's almost like, you know, when you're in an AA meeting and you step up and you're like, okay, my name is XYZ and I'm an alcoholic. Like you got to step up and say, you know, my name is Shanti and I actually contemplated taking my own life, Mm -hmm. but I want to do something about it today. Mm -hmm. So you got to give yourself permission and then you got to be able to ask for the help. Because one thing is we cannot help someone that doesn't want to be helped. Mm-hmm. And that's the tough thing about people who have severe mental illness and might be on medication. If they're not taking their medication, they're over 18, we can't make them take it. Mm-hmm. We can try to help them and assist them. But you got to want to be able to get the help. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to die. I wanted to get that help. And now You think I'm that I, most people I think most people want don't that? want to die. Right. I think most people, it's a cry for help for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I see some people who actually have attempted, but they are suicide attempt survivors. And they talk about it and share their story. And mm. they say, hey, I really, I didn't want to die, but I didn't know what else to do. Mm. I was at my limit. I was in so much pain. And I didn't want to put my pain on somebody else. Mm-hmm. And, and so I say to you, bring me that pain, like, for whatever reasons, like, I, I know I'm the wounded healer, but I'm out here, like, bring me that pain or take that pain to your doctor or to your therapist or to your psychiatrist. Because if you get physically hurt some other way, you're going to go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. The mind, the brain is your largest organ in your body. Mm-hmm. Why don't we want to stop that pain? Mm-hmm. Why are we ashamed to stop that pain? Girl, I'll, I see my therapist every other Thursday at 3 I o'clock. I love therapy. I'm like <laughs> I'm obsessed with therapy. And guess what? Therapy I is love not it. just for people who got have a problem. Wrong. Oh, so, oh! Sometimes I'm having the best week ever. Yes. and and I'll have a great therapy session there because you go. I I, I want to like wh- why is this working for me? And I really I, I learned this this week. And yeah. and sometimes just reinforcing the good things helps you repeat them. 100%. And yeah, therapy is I, it's just like sitting with a smart person and, 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 even and if you flushing say, out okay, ideas. I'm and not ready for therapy, but it, get yourself a life coach. You know, I feel like all these kids that are getting signed to deals or athletes, like they should all, it should you come need a with therapist, it. you need a life coach, you need a yoga financial instructor. advisor. 100%. <laughs> yeah, all those <laughs> all things. All of that, right? All those things. <clears throat> yep. But first, yeah, you need to make sure that mentally that you're okay. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I but mean, so it's, I just love the work that I do. And I speak to major corporations now. Companies are now hiring me to come talk to their staffs. I've done EA Sports, Reebok, wow. Spotify. I mean, SoundCloud, all these big companies. You never know where it could take you. Just, you have to follow your path wherever it goes. And then you'd I'm be, like, surpri- okay, this is you'd be dope. surprised. Yeah. I'm launching a new T-shirt line. My first T-shirt What's the T-shirt? Is, it's I got 99 problems, but therapy ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So I want to take some like hip hop slang and, you know, make some well Make some cool t-shirts. Some so yeah, I'm excited. I would also imagine like there's no quick answer to any of this. It's like, yep. I always hear people say, oh, you got to talk. You got to get ther-, like the quick answer is get therapy. And then somebody who's not well goes and maybe finds a bad has a and bad experience. Happens. Not every therapist is a good therapist. And then they just give up on it. And they give up on like, it. Nah, I'm good. I'm cool. Yeah, I think about that often because after my car accident, I had a, a like heavy PTSD. Did you really? Oh I was yeah. Gonna, I was gonna ask you if it was okay to. Oh totally. Ask yeah. you, oh no, yeah. totally, totally. I know I had, I had PTSD, which also had some anxiety. 
<clears throat> issues that go yeah. along with that, right? Uh-huh. And so I was looking for somebody to help me through that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't drive without like my hands shaking and like I was like it was triggering for oh you. it was like full full on for sure PTSD yeah. that I was exp- my body was experiencing my mind would be like you're fine why you've driven a thousand you know like I felt like I could talk myself back sure but my body was and it goes in fight or flight mode it goes to fight or flight mode right yeah. and so I had I had reached out to a couple of therapists that do PTSD mm-hmm. and I didn't connect with Twice I had bad therapy. Twice oh, no. I don't want to say bad therapy. Not good therapy for me. Correct. I I felt like the sessions weren't doing anything wasn't for me. Wasn't moving the needle. Wasn't moving the needle. And yeah. I and I thought about people who were in worse situations than me and how how frustrating that would be mm-hmm. if I was suicidal. Yes. Which I was not. But if I was and I went to find a therapist and it didn't work for me. That's tough. How tough that could be. And so I thought of people in that condition like, Absolutely. wow, you know, I, I was um, stable enough to know that, okay, I'm just going to keep fine until I got to fix this. Yeah, this right. is this is not the way I want to live the rest That's of my right. life. I don't want to, you know. to your point, not everybody is strong enough. I did, but it made me very mindful of how challenging that could be mm-hmm. for somebody who goes to try or, or gets a quick answer from somebody. Well, you need therapy. O- okay, I'm going to try it and then it doesn't work well. You have yeah. to know that there's, you just haven't found it yet. Dad, I tell people it's a lot like dating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got, but seriously. No, yes. You, you got to yeah, keep, going. keep going. You got to yeah, stay at it. Going. The other thing, too, is Even bad therapy is better than no therapy. That. Yeah. And it's important, too, like for communities of color, sometimes we want somebody that looks like us, right, that understands yeah. us from a cultural perspective and our yeah. little cultural nuances. That's why I want to encourage more young kids to think about therapy I mean, um, psychology and psychiatry is viable career options, right? Because mm-hmm. we need more people that look like us that are helping us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I get important. that. I get that, but it's not necessary to be able to. Absolutely yeah, yeah. not. Uh-uh. But sometimes I've seen that a lot of some of the younger people that I talk to, they want people who understand their mm-hmm. culture. And so it's nice when you can find someone. So it's like great sites like yeah. um, betterhelp.com, Psychology Today, and they ask you all these really key specific questions about what you're looking for, your sexual orientation. Oh, those are so good. they really break it down. Mm-hmm. So if you want a specific therapist that looks a certain way, that understands things from a cultural perspective, you can get those from those sites. And NAMI.org is great. And, of course, silenceforshame.com, Therapy for Black Girls, TherapyforMen.org. is some good stuff out there. Good. I would love to... If you could just yeah, give, give us you like those resources, that 100%. resource in that literature, we'll we'll put it up under the uh, yeah under the, I can email the that interview. over to you. Yeah, I mean, listen, just do something. Don't do nothing. That's right. You know I mean? Or so, even you know, there's support groups. You know, a lot uh-huh. of times, you know, and if you're a student in school, just don't be afraid to talk to the counselor because counselors aren't always therapists, right? Usually, uh, most school systems have like one school psychologist for every 500 students, but they'll have counselors or social workers that come mm. to the school, but or talk to your coach or, you know, you got to just be able to open up to somebody. Mm-hmm. I tell people, you know, we're in basketball season. It's the playoffs right now. So before you hit the court, you got to have five players to start the game. But I say, who's in your starting five? We all need a starting five people that we can call on if something is wrong. Um, and then there's this other great organization called the Crisis Text Line Organization. If you're at home and it's three o'clock in the morning, you can't get to your parents or friends or colleagues you can text the word silence, S-I-L-E-N-C-E, to 741741. And you can actually text back and forth with a counselor for like 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. And then they'll con- they're like crisis counselors. Mm-hmm. And then they'll connect you to therapists in your respective region. It's wow. a national organization. This oh. is a dope resource. It's confidential. It's 24 hours a day. Yeah, this is probably half your work too, right? Is is making sure people are aware of hundred percent. I have to push resources out. So yeah. that's why, like, our silence to shame dot com page has a resource tab, and yeah. we have a list of you know all these wonderful organizations that are out there doing the work because we're just an advocacy and awareness organization. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, we just um, celebrated May first in Atlanta, and we got the governor um, and Senator Anderson and a good friend of mine, Deanna Hamilton, made it happen. They designated May first as Black Children's Mental Health Day in the state of Georgia. So wow. now we're trying to take it to other states and then take it to the federal level and then maybe we can do one for you know hispanic children's mental health day and Mm -hmm. and all these other nationalities because i do think it's important that although there's a children's mental health day from a cultural perspective each culture brings different things that our kids go through yeah right so it's important that we stand up you know for our culture and make sure that we can create better outcomes Mm -hmm. and try to help erase these barriers to care Mm -hmm. because a lot of our kids can't afford insurance they don't have you know that's the same income level therapy is expensive 
It is. If you don't have the resources and you don't go that route. But I will say that New York City does a great job with providing resources for the community. And most major cities have what's called community service boards. So don't be ashamed to go to a community service board in your area because a lot of times they do offer free therapy Mm -hmm. or some of the hospitals have psych wards and they won't turn you away, you know, if Mm -hmm. you don't have insurance. So it's like anything else you got to do to work, do Mm -hmm. your research. But yeah. you, you can find the access and support that's out there. Yeah, and also, like, if you haven't found it, I always think this, like, even if I'm just, to bring it down to a more simpler thing, mm-hmm. like, if I'm having a bad day, you know, sometimes you're having a bad day, yeah. and you just, you're in it so deep, I I will tell myself, I just haven't figured this out yet. It's just, even when, it, whatever the worst thing is, mm-hmm. I just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. It's, but th- I always give myself that that grace to know that there is an answer there. 100%. There is a fix to whatever the thing is. Yeah. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. So you keep trying things until you get to it. That's right. It's just like a way to not um, to give up on it. To not give up on yourself or to sit in something like you say. To yeah. sit and, and in your own. And you might just put little stickies on your wall. Like have these daily affirmations, <laughs> right? Especially yeah. if you live alone and you're single. You know, you don't have kids. You know, you're by yourself a lot. Because, you know, I'm, I'm alone a lot. Um but that, is that a thing too that triggers maybe something oh gosh, for women? Being in isolation is mm-hmm. tough too. Um, that's why I make sure I surround myself with people that I love. You know, we have a great staff and we all understand each other, and and it, I lean on them sometimes. But mm-hmm. I just encourage anybody to have somebody you can lean on. Get you an accountability partner. Or get you a buddy, yeah. right? That can help you out. I love that. That's great info. We're gonna put a full list of. Um, all the resources you have and okay. how do we support you Shanti so today is National Silence to Shame Day so we need all of y'all uploading your photos um, go to at Silence to Shame on Instagram and click in the bio get your little photo frame put your picture up become a mental health champion and help us to raise funds for our programs because I'll tell you we're still a grassroots organization but we need the money to hire the staff to sustain so you can text the word silence to 707070 or you can go to our website silence shame.com and then we have our Brilliant Mind Gala coming up if you want to be a sponsor or be a part of it. Dallas Austin is the co-chair. Q Parker is mm. a part of it. We're honoring um, NFL player Chris Hubbard because we do a lot of work with um, athletes too. So mm. I'm excited. Pecos, where you at? Get at me. I need to talk to your <laughs> athletes, homie. <laughs> I'm going to stay on his ass for you. Yeah, sure. I need yeah. that. But yeah, just go to our site. And then more importantly, just, you know, be that change in your own household, in your own community, right? Mm. Silence to shame. Use that hashtag. You know, use that word. Make it a part of your everyday vernacular and get out there and let's keep erasing shame and stigma so people can get the help that they need. This might be a, a way to, for you to open dialogue with somebody in your family, yes. in your house. You post this, you start the conversation, and 100%. you help somebody open up to you about what you may be thinking is going on with them yeah and if you have a story you want to tell and you're you feel like you're at that point in your life where you want to share with others you know reach out to us like i mentioned we have that new campaign healing in public so you can go to our site and reach out to us about that but again love that donate text to give silence to 707070 do it today we got you we're all gonna do it we we're all gonna y'all. do it up here <laughs> thank you it's so, so good much. to see you congratulations it's on everything i mean what amazing work what amazing legacy work Thank you. That you're doing. So She'd be really proud. No, I hope really. we can continue to do some stuff together. For sure. I'm here now. I don't know like, why this any, took so any long. Any events, though, or you have anything my t- you need You have yet? my info, like myself. Yeah, 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 let's just, just let's stay in touch. Yeah, let's stay in touch, and yeah. let's make sure this is not like a one-time special thing. Let's, let's I would love that. keep the convo going for sure. Thank you. Shanti Das, everybody. Angie Mar. I love saying Angie Mar. 